Tony D and Little Joan with a screenwriter's rant on three different movies. I guess the theme would be deception. Uh, the first is called The Dancing Village, or Dancing Village, The Curse Begins, an Indian horror movie. Then Billion Dollar Bluff, a drama thriller movie that kind of looks um, like it should have been a comedy. And You Can't Run Forever, a definitely a thriller starring J.K. Simmons as the bad guy. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Check out my books. The links are in the description. Comedy Horror in South Jersey. It's the Pineys. Books 1 through 14. Available at Amazon.com. Don't forget, Kindle Unlimited is free. All right. So, The Dancing Village is not in English. Dancing Village, The Curse Begins. It feels like an Indian franchise horror movie and it's kind of interesting to me so a group of people go to this village I think because they have some drawings or some information regarding the history of the village possibly an artifact they go there to kind of explore it and at first everybody's sort of uh, off and a little bit creepy there's a scene where people are bathing in these baths and then one of them gets pulled underwater and it's all full of snakes. It's pretty crazy. But then uh, one of the women is asked to drink some coffee. And uh, she says it tastes sweet. And therefore she is the chosen one. She is meant to be the dancer of the village and perform some sort of ceremony that will do something for the village. And so they're kind of trapped there. I don't know, there's a scene where they're like picking, I think they're picking in the village, I guess? <laughs> or are they talking to the villagers who are gardening? I don't know. But then uh, then the, the, the girl who's the chosen one is, I don't know, they, they, they sort of kidnap her and uh, she dances and then she gets possessed. So it's kind of interesting. I don't really understand the, um, the mythos behind it. Uh, but scary things are happening. See, that's scary. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, I'm kind of interested in, there's like this sort of theme of snakes. So when the women dance, they're like w moving their arms like snakes. And then uh, towards the end, she's dancing and she puts her hands up and then her fingers start moving in weird directions. So there's a lot going on here. I don't understand the particular cultural uh, signpost here uh, or why she has to dance but I'd be interested to find out because a lot of times you watch a horror movie like you watch a like a vampire and you know the deal right you know the deal and uh, it's up to the up to the filmmakers and screenwriter to come up with a different kind of slant on vampire or else you're just like well, why don't you just put a wooden stake through its heart and be done um, so with this, you're in a different culture, different rules, right? You know, uh, sunlight, vampires, garlics, you know, you don't, you don't know what the deal is. So that's what I kind of like about that aspect of the horror. And it's kind of ancient. It's in India. It's a, it's a very old uh, uh, country. It's got its own mythos. So the rules all be different. And it's not the United States. Therefore, it's not necessarily that the characters will have all the modern conveniences immediately at their disposal like the characters in the United States do, does. And on top of that, there are slightly different rules with, say, the cops and the government. So you kind of are on shakier ground watching the narrative, and that's what, to me, makes it more exciting because you kind of don't know what's happening, right? You kind of... In the United States, you're just like, well, why don't they call the cops? And then in India, you're like, well, I guess, I, I don't know. Can they call the cops in India? <laughs> will, will they even come or will they just laugh at them? We don't know. So, um, yeah, I, I find it interesting. So, But my guess is first act, uh, the group of young people go to the village to explore it. 
to meet the elders and get answers to their questions because maybe they did some research. And at first, uh, it seems okay. It seems kind of okay. The villagers, they don't have a lot of reaction, but they seem friendly enough. Then in the second act, the girl is chosen as the chosen one. Perhaps her friend is killed, and that's why they keep staying. And then they won't let them leave. And horrible things begin to happen. And uh, she has to perform this ceremony, will they survive kind of thing. They try to escape. I'm not sure what's going on here. Are they forcing them to, like, uh, uh, you know, pick the crops? I I don't know. You see, it seems very, uh, you know, horrible. Here, like a, looks like a cow got completely skinned or murdered. I don't know. So weird stuff's happening. The villagers are weird. I don't, I don't know. I don't know where these guys got these shirts. They look like they're about 30, 30 years old in terms of the fashion. Um, so sweet coffee is a sign. I, I don't get that either. So I kind of want to watch it just to learn about the, uh, the culture of this Indian uh, thing. And if it's real or if it's or based on something real or they totally made it up. I don't know. You're, you're selling it to me because I don't know India that well. It is subtitled. It's not in English. So that makes it a little, it takes you a little bit out of it, I think. What's the ending? Again, I don't know. It's, it's hard to, uh, you know, in an American movie, it's probably going to be a happy-ish ending where the characters survive. But maybe it's like, oh, will it? Will the evil return? Dot dot dot. They could go full bore and be totally like, ah, everybody dies. They might do that in India. I don't know. Might uh, kill off all the characters and say, yeah. But it says the curse begins, so I have a sneaking suspicion some some of these people survive in order to, uh, or perhaps this is a prequel to a previous movie. Um. But that's what I like about it. Again, it can kind of go anywhere. So let's read the write up. The village still holds many mysteries. Piece by piece of mystery is revealed, including the terror of the most feared entity, namely Badarawal. Adarawuhi. I don't know who that is. That that is that something from Indian mysticism? I'm sort of guessing it is. So, uh, yeah, I would kind of see this. It seems interesting. All right, next up is the Billion Dollar Bluff. It's billed as a drama thriller, but it feels more uh, wonky than that. It's about a girl who helps her mom clean uh, houses, but she pretends she's rich, tells everyone her dad's a billionaire, and then she gets kidnapped by kidnappers who think they've kidnapped uh, uh, the daughter of a billionaire. So they decide to get rid of her, but she pitches them the following idea. You guys... Could rob uh, the houses and make yourself a cool half mil, uh, and that was the uh, 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 ransom they were asking. In return, she wants her, she wants five million followers on Instagram, and they're going to document the kidnapping, but she'll help them not get caught. Um, seems a, a bit risky and stupid, but I could kind of see it. I can kind of see it. I'm not sure who the 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 good guy in this movie is. I'm not I'm not so sure we're supposed to be rooting for the girl. She seems pretty damn cynical that she would do that. Um, and the uh, the villains uh, don't seem particularly good either. So, um, but kind of an interesting concept, I guess. Um, so her follower count's going up and up as she's kidnapped and then they're going to rob houses while they I don't know cart her around I don't quite understand how they're going to explain the kidnapping and it seems to me that they would kill her at the end because that would be the only reason they would get away right so first act she's uh, pretending she's a billionaire or heiress but she really helps clean the houses with her mom and then she gets kidnapped by the kidnappers. Second act, kidnappers realizes she's no one and they're gonna kill her. And then she pitches the idea, 
hey, uh, get me five million followers and I'll get you half a million dollars. You could rob the houses. So they start doing that. Um, the robbers eventually stop listening to her and rob whoever they want. They get rich and then, of course, they probably get greedy and they're robbing even more houses that she doesn't want them to rob. And eventually they start killing people. And eventually she, I don't know what's happening here. It looks like she commits suicide. I don't know. But eventually, uh, I think she gets in over her head, and then she has to escape and learn an important lesson. Um, and then in the end, she loses all her followers, would be only the only thing I could see that would justify the ending. Um, but they call it a drama thriller. I, I think it should have been a comedy. I think this should have been a comedy. It would have been fun with a teenage protagonist. Would have been more realistic. The teenager is, uh, you know, you can kind of forgive a teen for doing something so crazy. You could give her a reason for why she wants to beat her friend who has, let's say, 10,000 followers. At first, she wants 20,000 followers, but then she gets 5 million. And then maybe that impacts her in a negative way. So, let's see if there's a write-up. When a popular influencer gets kidnapped and held for ransom, she grips the media's attention by helping the criminals rob luxurious mansions. So it, it, it's more of a fun concept. I think it should have been a comedy. I, I don't think you should make it a drama thriller. I don't really, you know, I can't take an influencer all that seriously as part of the problem. I see these people as clowns. So, um, you know, I can't root for her. I can't root for the kidnappers. Who the heck am I going to root for? You know, unless they really do something to make me understand the influencer. Well, this is their only way to make money and she's trying to raise it for her mom and she's sick. Then maybe, but there doesn't seem to be that kind of setup here. Uh, this is, uh, I think also on, I think this is also on Tubi. Um, and finally, You Can't Run Forever, starring J.K. Simmons. Now, this is definitely a thriller. He is some sort of uh, business guy who teaches survival classes. But one day he gets home, and I think he kills his wife. I think he kills her. And then I think possibly she was having an affair, or he, or he thinks... She was having an affair with this guy. Possibly. I don't know. I'm just making a guess at that because it doesn't seem to be, be any reason. So he pulls the guy over, kills the dad. Uh, he sacrifices himself basically to let his daughter get away. And um, J.K. Simmons is now hunting her. So the ironic thing, of course, is J.K. Simmons is an expert survivalist in this movie. And the, the girl is not. And then he keeps not capturing her and killing various campers and people that she meets along the way. Um, and J.K. is pretty good. He's always good. Um, very capable killer. Here he kills, uh, I think, a bunch of um, hunters. Says, oh man, I, I almost shot you. Oh, what, like this? And he shoots them. So some pretty good lines. Pretty good lines, I would say. At some point, he gets back to the mom's house where she tries to fight him. And the mom is pregnant, too. So I, I'm not so sure what the deal is. Yeah, here he shoots the two hunters. May 17th. It looks pretty intense. I don't know. I, I don't know if I like J.K. as the villain. You know, I... I kind of understand why these actors take these roles. I mean, he has a lot of gravitas in it. He's great in it. But it kind of, to me, uh, after this, I couldn't see him as anything else, almost. Because he's very strong in it. So, but would I see it? Maybe. It looks pretty good. Everyone around him looks a little clueless, but okay. All right. So here's a write-up. Miranda, a young woman already suffering from acute anxiety due to a past tragedy, faces a new terror when a serial killer, oh, he's a serial killer? Chooses her as his new target. In a harrowing hunt 
Through the woods, Miranda finds strength she never knew as she tries to elude her murderous tracker. Academy Award winner J.K. Simmons stars in a spine-chilling thriller about the strength of family and the astonishing power of the human spirit. Yeah, I didn't see it going that way. So he's just a serial killer then. Eh, kind of don't like it as much. I think it would have been much stronger if he killed the father for a reason. Like, he kills him because he's just like, oh, yeah. He, uh, he kills his wife, and then he says, you know what? I'm killing her lover. And then, you know, the girl's a witness. He has a whole plan to get away. And now he can't get away with the girl as a witness, so he's got to kill her. Serial killer, too capable. In my view, I don't like the movies with super capable serial killers. It's a, it, it feels narratively lazy, you know. Uh, it just feels lazy that uh, he's so efficient and good at his uh, thing, and I uh, I think it would have been a stronger story if, in fact, he killed his wife and his, her lover for a reason. And now he's going to kill her. Maybe he doesn't really want to, but he feels like he has to. Um, and I suspect he dies at the end. Especially if he's a serial killer. Which means you're not going to get a sequel. So... Or maybe not. I mean, they're very franchise-wary these days, so they might let him live. Like, maybe they horribly injure him and he survives. You know, goes into a coma, and that's the end of the movie. And then the next movie, it just cuts to him in a hospital bed. Beep, beep, beep. But it's like, da, da, da. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the serial killer thing in movies, I think, is very overdone. It's not that serial killers don't exist. They do. They're very scary. But they tend to have a lot of problems. And uh, their problems tend to undermine their competency. I mean, there was a, a, a incident just recently of a 19-year-old. He just killed a homeless guy. And he, he just spilled his guts to the police. He was proud of what he did. He seems like a guy who would have been a serial killer had he gotten away with his first murder. I mean, it was kind of scary how casually he seemed to have murdered this guy. Um, that casualness, on the one hand, you know, J.K. Simmons is really... You know, acting the hell out of it. But at the same time, it's a movie. So you you don't feel the same horror, I think. You know, watching that news report, I was horrified at this kid's casual reaction. And excitement as telling people that he killed a guy. Here, I, I don't find that horror as much. It's just more like, oh, J.K. Simmons got to gonna uh you know he's gonna kill a bunch of dudes because that's the movie you know what i mean uh i'm not like i'm not like engrossed in the character all that much now maybe if i watch the movie i would be um but uh maybe it's based on something but yeah i don't know feels a bit cookie cutter um but he is good so three movies you can't run forever billion dollar bluff and Dancing Village, The Curse Begins. Well, I would put Billion Dollar Bluff on the bottom. Uh, I don't like influencers. I think, again, it probably should have been a comedy. Probably should have been a teenage protagonist. It would be a little more believable. Believable. If it's going to be a drama thriller, I think it has to be more intense. More intense. Um, and I think her making the suggestion of the 5 million followers undermines it. So I would put that on the bottom. Eh, I probably wouldn't watch it. It is free on Tubi, but maybe. Then number two. Wow, that's really tough. That is really tough. I, It's a real close call, but I would have to put this one as number two. I like J.K. Simmons, so I probably would watch it. Um, but I feel like I would get bored with it, you know? Because it's so by the numbers. I mean, he's got to lose at the end. I mean, maybe they would surprise you. And at the end, he just kills everybody. Uh, <laughs> or gets away. But, yeah, I feel like this is a one and done. J.K. Simmons 
you know, collecting a good paycheck. I can't, I can't fault the guy. Uh, but number one, I would put the Dancing Village the Curse Begins because it, it seems kind of fascinating to me. And there's there's some avenues here. I, I, you know, I feel like I learned some cool stuff about uh, Indian uh, mythos. And um, so I would put this as the one on top. It's different. You know, it's a different culture, different filmmaking. You're not going to get the same results. With J.K. Simmons movie i feel like i know where it's going i know where it's going and, and even the billion dollar bluff it that one's a little wonky but i don't care about the characters i don't know where it's going but i don't kind of don't care about the characters jk simmons i care about the characters but i know exactly what's happening this one i don't know what's gonna happen <laughs> you know i'm not sure who to care for it's gonna be it's gonna test my sensibilities so this would be more of a challenge maybe i watch too many movies and that's why I pick it, but Dancing Village, The Curse Begins. Okay, that's it for me, Tony D and Little Joan. Check us out on Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble for our more base takes. If you can find a more base take, I say, take it. I will be at the Juniper Village at 3 p.m. Uh, this is a senior place on Thursday, uh, so that's for the residents and family. I uh, will also be, what's the other one? Oh, on Saturday, uh, Great Outdoor Farm Mall in Medford, New Jersey from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Early day. Uh, <laughs> but the rain date is the 21st, uh, so if we get rained out, it is outside. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one.